Have you ever noticed how something doesn't exist and then it gets a name? And then it's everywhere. When I was a kid growing up, there, there, no one had attention deficit disorder. Now they got it everywhere. I mean, they, when I was a young person, I probably had an eating disorder. There weren't any eating disorders then. And so I was just uh, emotionally disturbed. And um, uh, some of you are laughing because you're saying, so what's changed? So the point is, we give things names. I called a buddy a couple weeks ago. We hadn't spoken for a while. This is a close friend who we, we started in business 30 years ago together. And we worked together for 10 years before we sort of went our separate directions. And, and, but he, he played a huge role in the lives of uh, all of our kids. He was sort of an outdoorsman, adventurer, and captured the imagination of, of all of our children. Nonetheless, uh, for these purposes, we're going to call him Frank. But I called Frank. And it was interesting because as soon as I uh, picked up the phone, as soon as he picked up the phone, it was like I wasn't sure I had the right person on the other end. Frank was, this is your type A personality on steroids. This guy was, he's a hard charger, a, a pusher. And Frank, over the last 20 years since we parted ways, he's, he's built a multi-million dollar uh, corporation uh, which services many of uh, this country's bigger corporations with their software and data processing needs and whatever. Frank always had a tendency to drive just a little too fast, drink just a little too much, push just a, a little too hard, test the boundaries just a little too often. And there was an intensity that that's just the kind of guy Frank was and it made a lot of people fairly uncomfortable. And of course, as you might guess, Frank who is a master of confrontation and intimidation. And so a lot of people were understandably uncomfortable in Frank's presence. Uh, but it also worked very well for him in, in building his business. But the guy on the other end of the phone was this calm, uh, peaceful uh, presence. He actually sort of wanted to listen to what I had to say. <laughs> Not sure that had happened in the last 30 years. But we had this nice conversation and about 20 minutes into it, he said, you know, I need to tell you uh, something happened to me. And I said, well, well, tell me about it. And he said, in January, I, I, I got a, I was arrested uh, with a, a DUI. And for some of you younger guys, that's driving under the influence of certain things. But nonetheless, uh, Frank was arrested. The judge slapped him pretty hard. And one of the penalties was 60 hours of classes and program and whatever. And, and they gave him a choice because he was a Vietnam vet, to whether he wanted to go to this program run by the, the state or this program run by the VA, the Veterans Administration. And he chose the VA program. Well. He said, I got into that program. He says, I've got uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome. And as I understand it, which I don't understand much about, but, but at the time that one has uh, uh, the stress, the trauma, the response that may have been appropriate to the threats that Frank faced every day was to shoot somebody. The only issue was that Frank kept shooting people you know, for the next 40 years, emotionally, verbally, psychologically. And then suddenly, he got a name. He got a story. I got post-traumatic stress syndrome. I don't have to shoot people anymore. And you see, when he got that name, when he got that story, suddenly he had some interior distance. He could take a new relationship to the reality that was his life and is his life. One sense, nothing changed. Everything changed. You see, nothing, everything was transformed because now he had a story. Now he could take a relationship to, he didn't have to shoot people anymore. The names are important. The names we give things, the stories we tell ourselves. We are all part of the whole. There's just one whole. There's only oneness. That's, that's the one story. There is only oneness. That's it. There's only wholeness. There's only unity. Now the other story is that I am separate from that wholeness. That I am in opposition to that wholeness. That wholeness is probably out to get me. And therefore I am separate. I am in conflict with that wholeness. We have both stories in us constantly 
all the time. You see, it's our contemplative nature in each of us that wants to connect with the wholeness, that already knows that I'm a part of all that is, and it wants to give expression to that. We each have to deal with our own special package. And I know some things about you because I know some things about me. And, and Frank knew some things about him. He obviously was scarred. Uh, guess what? Uh, we're all scarred. And we're scarred differently. And we're all wounded. And we all have our special package, our special demons, our, our special dark places uh, in our thoughts and in our emotions and in our whatever. And until we get a story that allows us to say yes to the whole of who I am, the whole of me, not this part that, man, it just won't go away. Until we can say yes to all of it, we're going to be faced with the offense of me.